there's a fine line between having a moment of brilliance and having a brain fade when it all comes down to a single answer. And we've seen plenty of those moments already and we'll no doubt see lots more. Welcome everyone, this is the eighth quiz in the Pro Quizzing League Battle of the Youth. And this one is on a topic dear to a lot of people's hearts, I'm sure. It's the quiz on travel and tourism. I'm excited to bring it to you. This is Dhruv Mukherjee as always. And once again, I'm joined by my friend and colleague, Shaman Nai Banerjee for the travel and tourism quiz. Hello, Shaman Nai. Hello, Dhruv. You're back again for a very favorite and very close to our topic of us as well as I'm sure of many of our viewers. Absolutely. And like I mentioned uh, during the last episode, it's a topic that's especially dear to a lot of people simply because they've been deprived the opportunity to travel for the better part of the last year and a half. Hopefully better days to come. For now, from the comforts of our home, let's get ready for the battle of the youth. Let's take a look right now at where we stand in terms of the points table. The Bengaluru Aces on top of the table with 32 points. 28 points for the Kolkata Wizards in second place. Then we've got the Geeks at 25, the Intellects on 24, the Erudits and the Brainiacs at 21 apiece. Are we going to see the Bengaluru Aces being dethroned after two, three solid weeks at the top? Only time will tell. Let's see who our six contestants are going to be this week. All right, representing the Mumbai Geeks is Aditya Narayan Sen who returns. The Delhi Brainiacs are the home team today and they are fronted by Navan Jain. We have Diganto Shorka returning after the very first quiz of the Battle of the Youth. He's representing the Chennai Erudits. The Bengaluru Aces are represented by Joe Thomas, Parth Panchal for the Ahmedabad Intellects and we have Shomo Broto Chakraborty for the Kolkata Wizards. Six brilliant finds, six exciting young quizzers all ready to lock heads. Shomanai, what's the first round going to be? Well, the first round, as usual, is of course the knives out. Each team gets 100 question, three clues per question, plus 150 if you get it right in the first clue, plus 100 if the team's getting right in the second, and plus 50 if they get it right in the third. So no passing, but we already have the two-way starts, and we have seen some remarkable news of this, as well as some very near misses, some uh, maybe some uh, an idea of overconfidence when you are taking the two-way starts that lies up into with you. Uh, but with that, we can start the first question of today's quiz. Let's take a look at the first clue. But before that, of course, we will take a look at the order in which the home team have told us. Right. So the home team for today, as we mentioned, are the Delhi Brainiacs and they've chosen to go second in the clockwise order. So it's going to be the Mumbai Geeks who will face the first question of the first round. And that's coming up on your screens right now. A quarter of a square mile in area, I am home to one of the most visited museums in the world. Hundred and fifty points. Uh, it is the pyramid at Louver. Aditya says Louver. That's wrong. We go in for a hundred point answer with the second clue. Two three hundred meter tracks and one station, smallest rail network in the world, used for importing goods and no regular passenger trains. Uh, this is Vatican City. Now he's changed it to the Vatican City, and that is indeed the right answer, Shaman Nai. The Vatican City, of course, one of the smallest countries in the world. It's barely a square kilometer, even lesser than that, quarter of a square mile, basically. Uh, but the third clue was, since 2013, I've been hated by a former Argentine bouncer. That is, of course, Pope Francis, who happened to be a bouncer very early in his life. Okay, so Aditya Narayan Sen takes Mumbai Geeks, uh, 100 points there. With that, we move to the home team, the Delhi Brainiacs. Naman Jain waiting for his first clue. Let's take a look at the first question for Naman Jain. All right, some confident body language there from Naman Jain. He's yeah. ready and ready to go. This is his first quiz in the Battle of the Youth. Okay, first clue. I sit on the Andaman Sea and I'm the biggest island of my country. How how broad do you want this? Okay, uh, we'll go for the second clue. 
is going for a second clue. Let's take a look at that. Okay. Uh, I will say uh, Java in Indonesia. You might as well take a guess. He says Java. It's wrong. So we anyway move to the second clue for 100 points. Rawai, Patong, Karon, Kamala, Katayai, Katanui are some of the more magnificent beaches for which people come to visit me. Well, I have a guess here, Shaman. Right? It's uh, likely to be one of two oh. answers. That is great. Uh, well, you have a geographical clue nonetheless. Yes. And my guess, of course, will be the wrong one, as is my luck. Third clue. Geologists believe I was once part of mainland Thailand, but millions of years of erosion resulted in a separate island. So we're talking about an island in Thailand. Uh, so I'll just go with uh, Singapore. Singapore, not really an island in Thailand, not an island, not part of Thailand. Unfortunately, let's take a look at the answer. Ah, as I was saying, Shamanai, this is the other guess. I thought Koh Samui, and it turned out to be Phuket. Yeah, well, we can see Naman drinking some water there, probably trying to charge up. But nonetheless, this is an early days. We move to Digonto, who is ready for his first clue. Let's take a look at Digonto's first clue now. All right. I get my name from the Spanish for the meadows, possibly due to the abundance of wild grasses back in the day. Uh, savanna. He says savanna, and that's a good guess for the wrong one. Locals use the term downtown gaming to describe certain establishments near the Fremont Street experience. Uh, Barcelona? Mm. Not Barcelona. Our third clue among my various nicknames are marriage capital of the world and Sin City. That should give it away, I think. Sin City, so uh, Rio de Janeiro? Mm. Unfortunately, ah. he's not much of a sinner. He gets it wrong. This is, of course, Las Vegas, Shavonai, famous as Sin City. Yes, and meaning the meadows. Well, Nikonto is one of those good quizzers we have. I mean, emphasizing on the word good. But nonetheless, we move to the fourth question of the first round to Jose Thomas, who is representing the Bengaluru Aces. Let's take a look at the first clue for Jose on this all right, one of the biggest tourist attractions of the continent, the worst drought in a century reduced me to a trickle in 2019. Sundarbans. Sundarbans, Sundarbans. Mm. This is not the Sundarbans. We pass to the second clue, not just by air. It can also be reached by an overnight train journey from Bulawayo in British coaches from the uh, 1950s amidst breathtaking scenic beauty. That's cherry blossoms. Mm. Cherry blossoms, he hasn't caught on to the continent, unfortunately. The Lozi people in southwestern Zambia refer to me as Mosi Watunya, which literally means the smoke that thunders. He should crack it. Lendizels. Lendicels, 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 Crown Mountains. I'm not certain if he's got the hint. Oh, the smoke that thunders is the Victoria Falls, of course. The legendary Victoria Falls, Samunai. Well, he didn't presume, did he? Uh, yes, I don't think so. It was reduced to a trickle. But nonetheless, we have a hat trick of zeros here. All right, but so let's see if Part can break the drought. Uh, the first clue for Ahmedabad intellect set comes on the screen now. Lots of tourists sit by the side of the poet Carlos Drummond de Andrade every day to take a picture. Of course, uh, this is uh, not the poet himself who sits there. I hope he understands that. Uh, Barcelona? Not Barcelona. One of the most iconic of its kind, the promenade here was originally built in 1906 by the then mayor, Pereira Passos, which should give him a clue about the language and therefore just a few countries. Uh, Madrid. No, he hasn't caught on to the language. During the 2016 Summer Olympics, this was the venue for staging the beach volleyball event. Uh, Rio de Janeiro. You need a more specific answer than that, of course. 
Uh, no, I uh, I don't know a specific thing. Like three out of three would be my answer. Uh, there are just a couple of iconic places yeah, I know. around. But I, I, I do not know of any space. I know it's a beach, but I do not know any beach name from Rio. Okay. No problem. We put him out of his misery. Let's reveal the answer. This, of course, is Brazil. We're talking about the language, well, the, the hint at the language was Portuguese. Those are Portuguese names. And this is, of course, the Copacabana Beach, where the beach volleyball event was held in 2016. No problem. We move now to the Kolkata Wizards and Shomogoto Chakraborty. The nice, easy, relaxed pose, exuding confidence. Let's see what he does with his first clue. The desert region in the southern part of this kingdom was popularized in the 60s and 70s through a deliciously violent genre of films. Sir, is it Texas? Texas is incorrect. Second clue for 100 points. The second largest country in the European Union, home to a whopping 47 UNESCO World Heritage Sites, the third highest in the world as of July 19. That should give it away. Sir, it's Italy. Italy is the second most, I believe. Third clue, a Bollywood film sees three friends going on a trip to this nation to run with cattle and throw edible berries at each other. 50 points for the taking. Sir, I would like to double this. This is Spain. What was I thinking? Shaman Nine. This is the Kolkata Wizards. Of course, they're going to double 100 points and they get Spain with an, well, of course, the, uh, the movie is obvious. Zindagi na milegi dobara. And with that, we come to the end of the round. We take a look at the score room, but I guess you do not have much work to do on these lines in the first round. Yes, it's been a fairly lazy start by the team, so it's not much trouble for the scorers. Four teams are on zero and we've only got the Mumbai Geeks and the Kolkata Wizards on 100. The Wizards, of course, choosing to use their double card, which I believe they forgot to use last week. It can only be a uh, lapse in memory, nothing else, because they've been using it. Left, right and centre It's one of the highlights of the Battle of Youth. All right, Shamona, it's time for the second round. As always, lots and lots of ups and downs in scoring. Take it away. Second round is a lock and load. Six questions clockwise. That means we start with the Mumbai Leaks once again. Our direct for each team, differential passing. So if a direct question, teams get 100 points. But if it passes, teams can potentially rake in a 350 points in a single question. So as usual, we have already seen throughout the quiz for the league that many ups and downs are in this particular round as well as the fourth round. But we come to that later. But for now, let's take a look at the direct question for Mumbai Leaks. Okay. All right. Question one for the Mumbai geeks. Born in the Derbyshire market town of Melbourne, who, a man of religious conviction, offered food for thought and travel to his compatriots in the temperance movement in 1841, beginning with a rail hop from Leicester to Loughborough. One can only hope one gets the pronunciations right. This is for 100 points with Aditya and the Geeks. Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker is the wrong answer. We travel now to Delhi. Thomas Cook. 150 points. Excellent answer. Confidently punches the air. This, of course, is Thomas Cook, Shaman Nair. Yes, of course. And as Mark Twain put it, don't just book it, Thomas book it. So Naman Jain really knows his trouble on that front. Well, now it's his direct and the potential to get up 100 points on his direct. Let's take a look at the Delhi Brainy Access direct question. Date comes on the screen. All right. Naman Jain's question is, which dam that helped create one of the largest man-made lakes in the world and whose name might remind one of a different Hollywood actor was N.T. Ramarao seen building in the film Ramudu Mimudu. Okay, uh, I'll guess uh, uh, Nagarjuna Sagar. The south, I know only that. He says Nagarjuna. Okay, the home team is really up and running. They've nailed 250 points in just two questions and they've taken the lead. Super quizzing there from Naman Jain, leading from the front which means we now move to the Chennai Erudits and Digonto with his 
preferred 45 degree seating position that we saw in the first quiz as well. All right, third question for the erudits. In 2019, a record setting 876 people caused a traffic jam that contributed to 11 fatalities here. The photo went viral, raising questions about the department's ability to manage crowds. Possibly due to the bad press, the government of the concerned nation has banned sharing photographs of other people around without express permission from the authority. So where exactly has this law been enforced? We're looking for a location, not the country. Uh, is this Mount Everest? So the country should be Nepal. A hundred points steadily grabbed there by Digonto and the erudits. This is indeed Mount Everest. Very, very dangerous place to be taking selfies and taking photographs generally if you're not sure. So a good law overall passed. Shamuna, would you say? Yeah, absolutely. Mount Everest is a new Mumbai from the image it seems. <laughs> We now move to Joe Thomas of the Bengaluru Oasis. Let's take a look at Joseph's question. According to French sinologist Stanislaus Julian, which monk during his travels between 629 and 645 CE was captured by thugs and twice survived being sacrificed to the goddess Durga? An apt question. Traveling and touring isn't without its dangers and pitfalls, but only the brave survive. Uh, Fahian. Fahian, he says it passes for 150 points to the intellects who are still on zero. Oh, I'll say Marco Polo. He says Marco Polo, that's wrong. 200 points with the wizards now. Sir, Jiwen Sang. And the Kolkata wizards get it. This is, of course, Jiwen Sang. Joe's. With a wry smile, he knows he should have got that. He went for the wrong name. Unfortunately, that's the way it goes. I said there's a fine line between brilliance and a brain fade. Doesn't have anything to do with your knowledge. Just about what you can cobble up at that very moment. Okay, we move now to the fifth question. This is for Parth and the Intellects. W.T. Clark's suspension bridge finished in 1873 actualize the reunification of which national capital and Euro 2020 venue, once called the Queen of the Danube and comprised two parts situated on opposite sides of the river. So we're talking about the capital of a country, which is situated on two parts of a river. So is this Copenhagen? Copenhagen, he says, not a bad guess, but the incorrect one, Passes to the wizards. Where is it Berlin? It's not Berlin either. Passes to the geeks. It is it is Budapest. Uh, two sides of the Danube. It is situated on the bank of Danube. And he's absolutely right. This is of course Budapest divided into Buda and Pest. Am I right, Shamanna? Absolutely on the dot. Okay, so I think this is the last and final question of this particular round. This will be directed to Shomo Brotho for the Kolkata Wizard. Let's take a look at his today. Okay, one of the earliest examples of Mughal architecture in the country, Humayun's tomb was created thanks to one Bega Begum, who brought back some skilled craftsmen to work on the mausoleum in the 1560s. Which momentous event in her life had put her in touch with this overseas workforce? You can look at the framing of this question and know at once it's one of the nice ones. The answer is going to be something interesting and they'll have to think hard and come up with good creative but logical guesses. I'm looking forward to all the guesses here, Shomu Nair. And that's what quizzing is all about. Well, let's take a look at Shomu Brothers guess. Sir, uh, could you repeat the question that uh, like how the overseas uh, workforce were like connected to this uh, Bega Begum, right? Well, the wizard is asking for a clarification, right. it seems. No room for that. Let's check it. Sir, uh, Shesha Suri died, I think. He says Shesha Suri died. All right, the points start to pile up. 150 with the geeks. Um, maybe she went to Iran and, and, okay. and, and with so. 
think she went to Persia and she okay. brought back mm. visiting Persia is nice but I wouldn't say it's momentous that way uh yeah so what happened was this is 1560 okay so uh, in uh, for, for 1498 uh, vasco da gama came to india the route to india was discovered and because of this she could get the overseas workforce mm. answers that begin with what happened was rarely are correct editors i am thinking uh, this is after the grand trunk road was constructed so after that it became easier for the workforce to come into india and then work for it so This is just after Grand Trunk, so yeah. Mm. Incorrect. All right, a chance to score three hundred and get off the mark for the aces. Uh, this is how she went to Hajj, and after coming uh, back from Hajj, uh, she met with Guri Amir workers. So, what an answer! Three hundred points were there for the taking, and Joe Thomas took them. Thank you very much. He says to the other teams, "I'll have that three hundred." Wow, that's a super answer, and that closes our second round. Shaman Noy, should we take a look at the scores now? Absolutely, lots of ups and downs as we correctly predicted. Let's take a look at the scores at the end of two rounds. All right, lots of ups and downs. Only one team is still where they were at the end of the first round. The intellects yet to score. You've got three teams on three hundred now: the geeks, the aces, and the wizards, and the erudits on a hundred. This has all the makings of a quiz that could have lots and lots of variations and scores. For now, I think it's only fair that we allow these six super brains to take a two-minute breather, recharge themselves, feel a little better, smell some coffee if there's some around them, and come back with the second half of the quiz. It's time for the strategic timeout. We'll see you very soon. Welcome back from the strategic timeout. We're ready with the second half of the quiz. Which of course means it's time for round three. Shamanai, a brief introduction to the third round. It's the third round. Is don't shoot the messenger. The messenger, of course, being our celebrity Qans, our experts. So there are six two-tier questions, one direct for each team. The passing order is to be decided by the home team as usual, and the Delhi variants will tell us in which order they would like this round to pass. But For a direct question, they get a plus two hundred. If they ask for a clue, they get a plus hundred. And if it passes, it passes for a plus hundred. Okay, so it's time to meet our celebrity QM for this episode. Truth, why please do the honors. All right, our special QM for this episode is actually someone right from our quizzing world. We are very pleased to have Mr. Shubham Pal, an avid quizzer and an internationally known sports journalist. So he's one of those who likes to go around the world in a hundred sports. All right, the home team has chosen the order to reverse, which means this round is going to go anti-clockwise, as of course will the last round. So the first question is for the Kolkata Wizards, Shomu Bhutu yes, Chakravarti. Yes, This massive structure in a state capital was built by Captain John Gerstein after the terrible impact of 1770 famine. By what alliterative name? Is this shapely structure known? This massive structure was built by Captain John Garston in a state capital after the 1770 famine. By which alliterative name is this shapely structure referred to? Sir, uh, I will take a clue. He wants a clue, so it's worth a hundred points now. Yes, sir. The clue coming on screen: an enormous granary. It literally means roundhouse. Sir, Gol Gumbas. Oh, he jumped the gun there. It's not Gol Gumbas. Passes now to the intellects. Uh, this is a silo. It's not a silo. A literative name we need. Uh, guessing some alliterative of Colosseum. Not the Colosseum. Wrong country, I believe. This is Gol Ghar. Golghar in I think so it's in Patna. He knows the name, he knows the country, he knows the city. Excellent answer there, Golghar of course, of course, the uh, famous granary in Patna, and the hint there was of course the 1770 famine that uh, brought this about. Good answer there, hundred points lapped up by the erudits, and it's a direct now for the intellects. Question two. These igloos from Finnish Lapland. Are made of different type of glass. Why? 
We have a beautiful photograph over there of certain structures that we know from our childhood. These are, of course, more modern structures. These igloos from the Finnish Lapland region are made of a different type of glass. Why? So again, a question that's likely to have a lot of creative answers. I'll take a second clue. All right, the clue is that they've been designed so that windows don't frost up or rather windows don't frost over or steam up to ensure uninterrupted viewing. Okay, so uh, these windows enable the people living inside to view the Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights. I said there are going to be a lot of creative answers, Shamona. I was wrong. There's only one answer and it's the right one. The Aurora Borealis, Shamona. What a lovely answer that was. Absolutely. And with that part, finally opens his account for Ahmedabad Inflix. He will breathe a sigh of relief. And the third question coming up for Joe Thomas of the Bengaluru Oasis. Let's take a look at his question. Which city houses the tallest minaret in the world? Another lovely photograph, as you expect in a travel and tourism quiz. Which city houses the tallest minaret in the world? It's a rare sight, mind you, to see such blue skies. Should be a hint in some way. Yes, he wants a clue for 100 points now. This question has its clue. The city is also the titular setting of a Hollywood classic. Uh, Tunisia. Tunisia is not a city nor a Hollywood classic, unfortunately. Passes to the erudits. Is this Istanbul? It's not Istanbul. Uh, I'll go for a double. Ah. And I will say this is uh, Casablanca in Morocco. Finally, some other team than the Wizards double. Naman Jain goes for 200 and he gets it right with Casablanca. You have to say that was a bad miss by the other team, Shaman Noy. Yes, especially after the queue, where we I mean, I thought it was a giveaway, but well, not two others were facing the hot seat at that particular point in time. Naman Jain calmly and coolly laps it up. We move to the Chennai Erudits now. Let's take a look at Digonto's direct. Located near Kevaria in the Narmada district, which record breaking tourist attraction can be seen at this nature park on a river island? Okay, yet another picturesque photograph of a picturesque location. Located near Kevadia, which record-breaking tourist attraction can be seen at this nature park on a river island? I won't take a hint. The answer is Statue of Unity. And that in the picture is uh, Sardar Vallathai Patel, Sardar Sarovar So the answer is Statue of Unity. All bases covered and he deserves his 200 points. Excellent answer there. Statue of Unity indeed it is. It's a rarity, Shamanai, for teams to get it without asking for a second clue. Good answer there from the editors. Yeah, he might be from the erudits. His name might sound like a bomb, but he studies in Baroda, so maybe a home question for him. But nonetheless, we move to Naman Jain from the Delhi Brainiers. Let's take a look at his dress. In which city, named for a female hunchback, can one find this GI product? All right, another gritty, very well taken photograph. Let's have a look at the question now. In which city, named for a female hunchback, can one find this GI tagged product? Uh, I will go for the clue, the second clue. He wants a clue here. Now it's for 100 points. The city was famously known as the capital of Harshvardhan. So Shubham literally traveling the world with his clues and visuals. A nice assortment of questions. I, I will, I'm trying. I'm, can I guess? Uh, I will just say uh, Kakori. Okay, it was for Kakori. This is not the Kakori kebabs. Moves to the geeks. Uh, is this Bikaner Fijiwala? <laughs> it's not Bikaner. Moves to the wizards. Uh, is it the uh, Odisha Rasagulla? Ah, 
not the Orisha Roshagolla. Hmm. Could be blasphemous just to say that. For uh, is this Vishakapatnam? Polite query, but this is not Vishakapatnam. Aces. Vijapur. Not Bijapur. Bijapur, Bijapur. It's not Bijapur, passes to the edits. This is Kannauj, and the GI Tech product is Kannauj Ittar or Kannauj Perform. So Kannauj. Wow. Some wonderful answers coming from the erudits this round. This is indeed Kannauj, Shamanai. Tell us about the hunchback. Well, of course, Kannauj was previously called Kanya Kubjan, referring to the female hunchback. But a beautiful answer by Digantu with that he goes on to the lead, waited all the way for his turn to come. Beautiful answer there. With that, we come to the last question. This is read for Aditya Narayan of the Mumbai Games. Which alliteratively named Water body is this. Which alliteratively named water body is this? As simple as that. Look at the photo, answer the question, work it out. There is a hint there, of course, a visual hint. I'm sure Aditya will catch on to it. Yes, now he's looking closer. I think he's caught on to it now. Yeah, I'll need a hint. He still will go for a 100-point hint. Captain James Cook mentioned in his journal about the great abundance of plants here. It's usually the question that's got the little hints here. The clue has it's the little abundance hints. of plants. Is it Kangaroo Creek? Kangaroo Creek, well, not Kangaroo Creek. Passes to the wizards. No answer forthcoming per se. Passes to the intellects. Would guess touch the sea. Touch passes. the sea. Passes now to the erudits. Lake Losar. Not Lake Losar. I will uh, go for my second double and I will say. I see Qantas, so I will say Trans Tasmanian Sea. He's doubled and he's gone for it. He's wrong. Trans Tasmanian Sea, oh, Trans Tasmania is something, and the Tasmanian Sea is something else. He's combined the two to come up with a not very alliterative answer. Botany. Botany. Botany Bay. Yes, now everybody's trickling the answer out. This is, of course, Botany Bay. People latched on to Australia, but they weren't able to go for the entire answer. Shavannai, unfortunate. This one passes out. All right, we're now down to the final round and everybody's off the mark. The intellects are on 100 and three teams sharing points on 300. The geeks, the aces, the wizards. 450 for the home team, Brainiacs, and some brilliant quizzing in the third round ensures that the erudits go into the last round. 500 points, 50 points ahead, and 50 points, as we've seen, is peanuts in the scoring system. Shamonai, tell us all about round four. Well, Dhruv, the differential scoring makes a comeback and fasten your seatbelt, viewers. This is the final frontier. Six questions, anti-clockwise, 100 for each team. Great question will face you a plus 100 if you're right, but in the anti-clockwise direction, whenever it passes, so the last team can potentially take in a 350 points. All right, so the difference between the highest and the lowest score team as of now is 400, but it's a matter of a single question, perhaps. Okay, we take a look at Shomu Goto, who is representing the Kolkata Wizards. This will be his direct. Let's take a look yes. at his connect question. This is a round full of connect questions. We will start with the Kolkata Wizards. All right, we stay anti-clockwise. First question for Shomu Broto and the Kolkata Wizards. A dormant volcano connects these three. Sir, Barren Island. 
Barren Island is what he said. There was a bit of a. Sir, uh, Barren Island. It's been a bit of a technical glitch. We can get the answer now. Barren Island is what he said. It's wrong. Oh, uh, Kilimanjaro. Kilimanjaro. Say the intellects. Oh, uh, uh, it's just a guess. It's just a guess, and that's all you need. Just a guess. This is indeed Mount Kilimanjaro, Shamanai. He wasn't very, very sure, but who cares? You need 150 points, you get them any way you want. Yeah, we should always incentivize good guesses. So left to right, that's Taizu Wilhelm II, after whom Kilimanjaro was briefly named. There's a satellite image of the region. You can literally see a desert, as well as a peak, as well as a tropical greenery in the same location. And that was, of course, Snows of Kilimanjaro, the famous film which is based on a story by Ernest Hemingway starring Gregory Peck and Ava Gardner. We move to the intellects now for their direct. Let's take a look at his question and let's take a look at if Park gets 100 points to move to 350. All right, that'll really make the scores very exciting. Okay, a state capital surrounded by pine trees and ancient megaliths. That's the answer and these three connect to it. Oh, Shillong. Oh, I can see clouds, so I'm guessing that would be Meghalaya in the capital of Meghalaya, Shillong. This, yeah, but this is incredible. Two consecutive guesses where he wasn't really sure, he just went for it. He saw clouds, and so he said Meghalaya, and it actually was as simple as that. He's right, 100 points, Shamunai. Wow. Uh -huh. What are the chances? Okay, so that was the flag of Scotland. Shillong is, of course, called Scotland of the East. Beautiful place. That is the Umiyam Lake. And that was under the Roy, whose father was originally from this place. You know, they have a tea plantation connect. Uh, Umiyam Lake is a very beautiful place. So let me tell you, I've, I've been there in one BC, that is one before COVID, which is 2019. So it's an excellent place. Well, Path could care less about the lake. He looked at the clouds, and I think it's, it's, it's meme level to answer like that. Excellent. All right. A UNESCO World Heritage Site, home to the oldest structural monuments of India. What is connected by these three elements? Question for the Bengaluru Aces. Maha, Maha, Mahabalipuram. Mahabalipuram. He insists as Mahabalipuram as he should because it's the right answer, Shaman Nair. Excellent. 100 points there for the Aces and it's Fantastic how close the scores are. Brilliant. Brilliant stuff from Joe Thomas with the Bengaluru Aces. Gets an all-important 100 points. Prevents the question from passing. It was, of course, PM Modi and Xi Jinping meeting there. That is descent of Ganges and, of course, Pandavas and Drop. We all connecting to this beautiful place called Mahabalipuram in Tamil Nadu. All right. We move to the fourth question. This will be direct to Divanta Shorka for the Chennai Elrits. Chance to consolidate his lead of 500 points. Can he get 100 here? He can if he answers this connect question. A camp in a valley, a state capital and gateway to the hills. Connect these three. Uh, valley of flowers. Mm. Valley of flowers, he says no. And that means it's getting more and more exciting now. 150 points with the Brainiacs. I will just say uh, the Dune School in Dehradun. How overall do you want it? Okay. Uh, Dehradun. Well, this was answered much like Park. He saw a student and he went for Labasna school. and Dune School. Yeah. LBS NA and Dunes. All right, he puts the pieces together to get 150 points and he goes into the lead. And that was, of course, Student of the Year, that is Ruskin Bond, and that's the International Yoga Day, all connecting to Dera Dun. Ah, all right, Naman will breathe a sigh of relief, but most importantly, this is direct now. But before that, for our viewers who tell us 
how close the scoreboard look my goodness you can see for yourself how close it is we're down to the last two questions and anything can happen you've got the brainiacs the home team right now on 600 they've just pipped the erudits by 100 points but who knows these last two questions could be crucial the first question of course is going to be for brainiacs so they can really consolidate their lead and if it passes around well of course we could see teams touch 700 750 who knows let's find out in the last two questions of this quiz direct now to the delhi brainiacs and naman jain their connect question coming up on screen now a royal capital where according to a folk song a little girl was left behind and finally shamunai a question that's from my time and my generation and my what should i say range of interest uh, say oh oh I'll pass. Couldn't crack it. 150 points with the geeks. Something in the Royal Capital. There's a bit of a glitch there. Oh. Colombo. Colombo, he says, that's strong. It's now worth 200 points with the Wizards. Sir, is it Kingston? Kingston, Why? Kingston. Sir, King, King and Royal, so Kingston and I think Chris Gale is from Kingston, Jamaica. King, Royal, Chris Gale, he takes it all, puts it together and he comes up with the right answer. Kingston, Jamaica, it is 200 points, which means he is now tied in second place. 500 points. All right, let's take a look at the answer, Shaman Nai. Yeah, that was Kingston. That's correctly explained by Shomu Bruto. Well, from clockwise, you can see the Kingston Harbour. That's a very old photograph of that, slave labor and all. That is the Blue Mountains of Jamaica, also famously referring to the Blue Mountain Coffee, the very, very rich coffee from Jamaica. And that is Chris Gale, of course, from Kingston, Jamaica. What a snatch, what a steal from the Kolkata Wizards there. That's magical. Well, all right. We now come to the sixth and last question for this particular quiz. All focus on the Mumbai geeks. Let's take a look at Aditya's direct. Home to the Southern Hemisphere's longest travelator and the world's deepest natural harbor. It's all on him now. Anything could happen. The Aces could win. The Erudits could win. The Brainiacs could win. And it all depends on Aditya Narayan Sen and what he answers. Oh, so is, it, is it Sydney? Uh, like I just lost the harbor. The teams have literally been taking one word and answering in this round, and that's actually all you need. He's right. This is Sydney, and the home team breathes a sigh of relief and thanks the Mumbai Geeks for getting a hundred points, because that means it's been clinched for the Delhi Brainiacs, the Sydney Opera House. There in your photographs. Let's have a look at the answers, Shaman. Yep. All right. So that was Hugh Jackman, and that is Port Hanger, which is a slang uh, for the Sydney Harbour Bridge, uh, locally referred to. And that was the Bondi Blue IMAC, of course, getting its name from the Bondi Beach in Sydney. So with that, we come to the travel and tourism quiz. But before that, the final scores rule. What a quiz it has been. All right. Look at that. You got the intellects on 350. They really picked up some precious points through simple guesses. And you've got two teams on 400, the Mumbai Geeks and the Bengaluru Aces. And then you've got two teams on 500, the Erudits and the Wizards. But in the end, it was the home team, the Delhi Brainiacs. Where you could say it was a stroke of genius to have the seating order the way they chose it. Who knows? But 600 points they take and they win the quiz. Oh, what does that mean for the points scored today, Shamanai? Let's take a quick look at today's points table. 
Yes, so the Ahmedabad intellects getting one point, but nonetheless a remarkable turnaround from Park. Uh, Bingy Blue Aces finishing on three points. Good answers from uh, Jose as well. Uh, well, the Chennai Airbits coming second jointly with the Kolkata Wizards on five points. But winning the quiz with Delhi Brainiacs on six points with a remarkable, remarkable show and the beautiful use of the double card. If they hadn't used the double card, they would have probably lagged behind Strike and we could have had a three way tie, maybe. Who knows? Uh, well, Mumbai Geeks. Uh, on 400 points and comes third. So now we take a look at uh, the overall league stand after eight matches. We are almost two quarters down. The last quarter to go. Anything All can right. happen in the last quarter too. All right. So the league table as it stands shows the Bengaluru Aces still in the lead, holding on to the lead. But look at that. Right behind them, just two points away, are the Kolkata Wizards with 33 points. The Wizards, of course, started off very, very slowly in the first quiz, but they've used their wild cards almost in every quiz. And they've come ahead by leaps and bounds from the other teams. You've got the Geeks on 28. The Brainiacs, on the back of today's performance, are in fourth place now. 27 points, 26 for the Erudits, and the Intellects in sixth place with 25. Right now, it really doesn't matter who's sixth, who's fifth. Take a look at that 25, 26, 27, 28. Anything can happen in the next quiz. And if this quiz has been anything to go by, you can rest assured something or the other big is going to happen. All right, with that, we're done with three quarters of the Battle of the Youth, as Shabonoi said. We're ready for the final quarter, and it's going to begin with the food and beverage quiz. So, after a lot of travel and tourism, you're going to be hungry, you're going to be thirsty, and we're going to bring you more quizzing action to satisfy your appetite. Stay safe, everyone. Take care. This is Dhruv and Shamonai signing off. We'll see you for the ninth quiz. See you.